we need to talk. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Jeff and I'm Jeff. Let's talk about fish. Almost forgot that. So we need to talk about last week. Um, last week, we got the new clownfish for the 40-gallon reef enclosure that we've been working on. Uh, we had Finn, right, to start out with, and we just got Huck, as I'm calling it. Huck Finn. Get it? It's cute. It's fun. Yeah. Um, anyway, and we all saw how that ended. Scary stuff, man. Scary stuff. I did not expect anything like that to happen. I had done a lot of research, as I always do, because I'm great at research. Best, as you know. Nothing ever goes wrong. I also learned a little bit about the clownfish hierarchical system. Clownfish have a strict class system where one is always dominant and one is submissive. What I didn't know is that they established this through freaking Fight Club. Let's talk about dominance, okay? In the clownfish society, the dominant one is always the female. So clownfish are born as males, okay? But they have the capability to have both sex organs. They could be male or female. Cool, great, we love it. Good job, Nemo, killing it. Um, and then this is determined, as I learned after what happened, through dominance. So how do they show their dominance? Well, one, you can be alone. So Finn here was alone in the tank. So more than likely, he had either become, I got him in a tank full of a bunch of other people, so I don't really know what he was, but he definitely became a female, more than likely. So he was dominant. He had this whole thing to himself. This was his place. Her place. Excuse me. It's so hard to keep track of, man. Huck, the new guy, when I got him, he was also in a tank by himself. It was the same tank that I got Finn from, so they knew each other at some point. But at this point, he was the only one in that tank. So I should say she, probably. So you had two aggressive females that both had their own space, their own land that was all theirs. They had a bunch of room. And they were dominant because they were by themselves. So the only thing you can do is one of them has to now win. One of them has to beat the other one and assert their dominance. And that one gets the right to be a female, I guess. And then the loser has to grow something. Anyway, um, it's also kind of crazy because uh, Huck is way bigger than Finn. I, um, not way, there's a little bit bigger. But yeah, he's the one, spoiler alert, he's the one that ended up losing. Finn, probably because this was his home first, right? He knows this place. This is He's going to fight harder for his home. This is where she lives. Huck, on the other hand, was coming into a new location, a new clownfish home that belonged to somebody else. He was the guest, and he, uh, yeah, he ended up losing. The crazy part, it's completely normal. That's just how they work. That's how they run. Now, there are a couple of things that I would say to do differently. Don't replicate that because it can be dangerous. They can stress out. They can injure each other. You want to take as many precautions as possible. So number one, easiest thing, buy two clownfish at the same time. But these guys are already together. They already knew each other. We probably could have avoided all of this if I would have just got two instead of one that week. So I was trying to be extra safe with the cycling system and not overload on the bio load and blah, 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 blah. blah. Get two clownfish, it's a big tank, whatever, it's fine. Number two, if you do have one clownfish and you want to get another one for that, to go along with that fish, you can. There's just a couple things you have to keep in mind. Number one, make sure they are the same. Number one, make sure they're the same type of clownfish. Now this is a new one. Do you know there's different types of clownfish? We've got Ocellaris, which are these guys. Probably your most bog standard clownfish, right? Just that's what a clownfish is, that's what Nemo is, that's what Marlin is. Here's a bunch of other types of clownfish. But that doesn't mean they have to look the same. So there's lots of boutique clownfish, right? They have these cool, maybe they're all white, or maybe they got like, they're melanistic, right? They might be black. Those are fine as long as they're the same type. So a Miami white Ocellaris clownfish, for instance, would be fine to go with the standard Ocellaris clownfish. That's fine. So just make sure they're the same kind. Number two, size. Typically the one that's been in the tank by itself is a female, right? So that one's already the most dominant. So whatever clownfish you get to add to that tank is already going to be, it's more than likely going to be the one that's more submissive and becomes the male. So get a smaller one. Now this might seem counterintuitive, but what this is going to do is make the fight shorter. These guys fought for about a day and a half before they were starting to swim together and bond and it looked like they had figured their stuff out. You can also get counseling. Bad joke. 
So if you introduce one that's much smaller than the other one, he's gonna lose really quickly. And then they're not gonna stress each other out too much because it'll be quick, right? And then number three, one that I learned that I didn't do because I don't know why I didn't do it. I probably should have done it. Probably would have made it easier. Um, switch up the tank. So, like I said, the clownfish that's already there is already, they're feeling good. They know this environment. It's their home. Take your, switch your scape up. If I had to, like, switch these two rocks around. Now it's like a, it's like an even playing field now. And basically what this is going to do is dial down the aggression a little bit because they're both going to be a little bit more unfamiliar. They're still going to do their thing. They're still going to fight, but it's, it's not so much one-sided. But yeah, I didn't do any of those, as I said. So they, you know, it's probably just going to work itself out. As long as you follow step number one, make sure they're the same type of clownfish. But the, the most important thing is just watch. Make sure you keep your eye on them. I had, I was sitting here for like the, those two days, or the day and a half that they were fighting. I was watching them the entire time, making sure it didn't get too violent. And I had some, I have a little breeder's box floaty thing. I would put that there to give Huck a place to go hide whenever it was getting too rough. That way he could kind of chill out and de-stress a little bit. You know, it's not constant. But yeah, that's just how they do stuff it's natural it's crazy it's weird i didn't i didn't know about all that when i signed up for this but that has now gone past and now they are like a bonded pair at this point they swim together all the time they do this cool thing where they just like they jitter like it looks like they're stuttering and that's like how they communicate it's really strange they kick sand up at each other it's really cool to watch i'm really happy now that i got another one and i can see them interact with each other it's really stinking cool so yeah it's all good. Huck and Finn are happy, and now I think it's about time that we get a new guy in. Uh, next week, hopefully, I don't want to spoil the video, but hopefully we're going to pick out a fish to go in the 40-gallon uh, breeder. All right. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned next week. I think we're going to get a new fish in here, maybe a couple. We'll see what happens. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment, tell your friends all the things that YouTubers say at the end of their videos. Thanks so much. I'll see y'all next week. Peace.